Hello, good morning, everyone. I'm gonna share my presentation about the very least vision design for privacy preserving human activity recognition. I'm gonna divide it into five parts to describe my presentation. Uh, human activity recognition is important task in numerous applications such as assisted living, health monitoring, and etc. Existing, existing activity monitoring system require individuals to wear a device uh, which is known as a motion sensor, uh, which is not convenient because of the additional burden and the discomfort associated with wearing the devices. Uh, in passive monitoring system, camera-based sensing methods are limited by occlusion problem and sometimes refer to privacy issues. Uh, in the right figure, a girl is falling down, but her legs are clued by desk, which can not be seen directly by camera. Wi-Fi sensing is not intrusive without the privacy issues and is sensitive to lighting conditions. Therefore, Wi-Fi sensing has a pretty prevailing popularity in human action recognition. Uh, however, uh, Wi-Fi sensing is a cube sum for five-grade human activity recognition because wireless data are sensitive to environmental influences. Uh, Fortunately, the vision information from a camera is a potential complement to assist uh, Wi-Fi sensing in some environment without any occlusions. Uh, so, we propose a Wi-Fi-based and a video-based neural network for active recognition, where the synchronized data video, uh, the video data serve as a supplement for the various data. First, we capture the videos from a camera, then transform that into frames. Then we feed the frame, frames into alpha post, which is classical neural network, as a vision channel to get the confident maps. Uh, then we're using various data to uh, feed into a REST net, which is a Wi-Fi channel. Then the confidence maps from the alpha post uh, as uh, the supervision channels to treat the REST net. Then we got the confidence maps from the REST net, treat the REST net and uh, we extract the human skeletons from the confidence maps. This is our proposed method, WINN. Then the various data we also uh, fed into a machine learning method support vector machine, SVM, as a Wi-Fi channel for action classification. Also, the human skeletons from the WINN method also fed into the SVM to, for action classification. Then a convolution neural network uh, uh, also used to classify the Wi-Fi signals. Uh, first of all, we must introduce some uh, basic knowledge about the um, wireless data. In this paper, we're using the channel state information as a wireless data uh, for human action recognition. Uh, it depicts how signal propagates from a transmitter to receiver at a certain scale of sub frequencies along multiple paces. Generally, it can be modeled as follows. X, Y correspond to the transmitted and received signal vectors, respectively. H is channel matrix representing the sense values, and N is a div divided Gauss noise out vector. CS contains 30 sub to describe the multi pace propagation affected by the physical environment. Uh, uh, for example, reflection, diffraction, and scattering. Therefore, it's possible to use in the changing of channel state information between a transmitter and a receiver to monitor the activities of a human being. We activate Vita three antennas, both in transmit and receiver, and then each update CS data packet can up to 270 raw features of uh, amplitudes. Uh, we collected a various vision data set, which is short for YV, and the, the floor plan of uh, experiment C is uh, illustrated uh, above. Uh, and we can see clearly that the transmitter desktop and receiver desktop are fixed located in the left side of the office, while the volunteers perform activities here 
here and here in different areas to simulate the occlusion cases. Uh, to be specific, the various data and uh, vision data are collectively synchronously uh, to, to make them uh, synchronized. We, we attached a camera, which is a depth camera D435i into the same location as the various network card in the receiver de desktop. Uh, in fact, the activity is really complex. To simulate as many situations as possible, uh, three scenarios uh, are designed, including the scenes without any occlusions, with uh, partial occlusions, and with fully occlusions. And each activities are repeatedly performed by the volunteer about 20 to 30 seconds in various styles, including different directions, different speed, and different tense, and etc. Uh, in fact, the size sequences are easily affected by the environmental noise. An uh, example of uh, dynamic falling down action is uh, demonstrated below, and the four below is uh, corresponding frame uh, video frames. Uh, we can see it clearly in this figure. The CS sequence behaves periodical changes when the person performs an action. It's an action, action, action. Another example is for phone talking. Uh, for these two actions, the flakti fluctuation of the dynamic and the static action curves are obviously different, which can be seen from these two actions. Uh, so uh, we can got to conclude that uh, the CSI has a potential to distinguish different actions. However, it is including ser serious noises in the raw CSI sequences. So we need, need a pre-processing to make it more robust. Uh, now we're using three stamps. The first stamp is outline removing. Uh, in this uh, stamp, we're using media filter. Uh, after the media filter, we can see it's more uh, outline has been removed. Then we're using the smoothing, uh, adopt a media filter. Uh, the third stamp is a low pass filtering using a butterworth filter. It uh, seems more robust for the falling, for the further processing. Another example is the full phone talking. Uh, after the pre-processing, we uh, must uh, perform the action segmentation because it prerequisite for further processing, such as the classification. Since the CSS sequences are recorded in long time, we propose a way to separate into different moments, different action, ac action segmentations by an equal time interval. Then uh, after the action segmentation, we're using data augmentation to, uh, to reduce the uh, overfitting, to address the, the problem of overfitting. Because the CS, uh, CS sequences are limited, uh, so we're using the data augmentation, the same method as the, the CSNet in this paper to make it uh, more robust to the noise. Uh, in our experiment, we using uh, we have collected the data set. We're using three second uh, action sex like the one second action segmentation, two second segmentation action segmentation, and three second action segmentation to segment the set sequences to get the action data set WIVI. Then we average the action segmentation set into set samples and augment the set samples to form the training data set by V, which is shown in the right figure. Uh, in our experiment, we're using, two, uh, using both quantitative uh, evaluation and uh, visual inspection. For quantitative uh, evaluation, we import it both the traditional machine learning and deep learning method to verify efficiency of the data set, namely SVMC and YV. Uh, we can see it directly that all three methods do, uh, can distinguish nine actions very well and keep more than 80% of activity recognition accuracy. And then we can find that WIN achieves the most uh, 
a robust result than compared to the other two methods. Then SVM achieves the highest accuracy uh, for three second action segmentation. Then uh, CN achieves the highest accuracy for one second action segmentation, and uh, WIN also achieves the highest accuracy um, for one second segmentation. We can see it clear WIN achieve for detail in detailed uh, view. We can see that WIN achieve most the most uh, one hundred percent accuracy for nine seconds. See. And the right figure is the configured matrices by three method. Uh, the first column is SVM, second column is CN. Uh, the first row is SVM. The second row is by CN, and third row is WIN. The first column is for one second action segmentation. The second column is for two second segmentation and the third column is for three second segmentation. You can see it clearly WN achieved the most robust result because it has less noise in his, uh, in his, uh, in its uh, confused matrices, both uh, three, uh, from uh, one second to three second. Uh, for visual expectations, uh, we saw some example of several examples. The first example is uh, the scene without uh, occlusion. A female person is performing falling down action actions. And the second example is uh, pushing the same scene, the same person. The third is third example is a Kiki. We change a volunteer. It's is a male in the same scene acting through him. Uh, it has found that the our uh, our method is performing very well. Uh, the second uh, the fourth. Uh, it's a uh, force our action is uh, uh, with partial occlusion. A female is performing city. It has very good results. And uh, the sixth example is uh, a female in the partial occlusions performing falling down actions. And another is pushing. Uh, in this paper, we propose uh, we have got some conclusions. Uh, in the paper, we propose WI scheme to tackle the occlusion problem of active recognition. Uh, we propose WI for active recognition and improve the robust robustness of active recognition. We collected the VV various vision activity data as a benchmark in three things, uh, including without occlusion, with partial occlusion, and with full occlusion. And the experimental results show that WVV dataset satisfied the primary demand, and WN achieved most robust results compared to other two methods regard to multiple action segmentation from one second to three seconds. In future, it's promising to extend the diversity of IVD set with respect to activity, location, and speed. Specifically, we will investigate a deep learning pipeline to realize the automatic selection of branch for recognition according to the input data types. Thanks for watching. And our video demo about this paper can be found in YouTube in the following links. Uh, if you had, have any questions, just feel free to contact me with email. Thank you.